Hi, I'm Dr. Chad Perlin, and I'm one of the pediatric plastic surgeons at Miami Children's Hospital. And I'd like to take this opportunity to explain one of the very common problems that we see, which is positional plagiocephaly, also known as deformational plagiocephaly, or occasionally it's also referred to as flathead syndrome. This is the craniofacial model library. This is something that myself and Dr. Jeffrey Marsh created several years ago. And it's a tool that we use to explain to families the nature of complex skull problems. This is used in almost 70 hospitals around the world, and it's really been a great asset to helping families. So I'd like to show you three skulls this morning, a normal skull, as well as a skull of a child with positional plagiocephaly, and lastly, with a different condition, which is called lambdoid synostosis. If we look at an infant skull like this, this is a skull of about a two-month-old infant. We see that, obviously, here are the eye sockets, the front of the skull, the back of the skull. Here's the soft spot that's on the top of the baby's skull. And most importantly, I want to focus on these joints here. These joints, which we as plastic surgeons call sutures, cranial sutures, are what allows the skull to expand um, during growth and also for the skull to collapse during birth. So if we didn't have these joints in our skull, it would be difficult for the head to collapse as the baby came through the birth canal. And it would also be difficult for the brain to grow as the child got bigger. The brain growth during early infancy is really happening at an exponential pace. And you can imagine it's sort of like a foot growing in a shoe that never changed shoe sizes if we didn't have the ability for the skull to expand, then our brains wouldn't be able to continue to enlarge. So the advantage of having a soft skull is that, again, the skull can collapse as it goes through the birth canal, and the skull can grow along with growth of the brain. But the problem with having a soft skull is, again, the skull is multiple. And several years ago, the pediatric societies came out with the Back to Sleep campaign. And in the Back to Sleep campaign, they began to encourage babies to sleep on their backs. And this was a very uh, good idea, a very wise idea, because research showed that it decreased the incidence of sudden infant death syndrome, otherwise known as SIDS. However, as babies began sleeping on their backs in a position such as this, we started to notice that many babies came to see us with flat heads on the back like this. And you can clearly see the difference between the normal infant skull and the skull of an infant with, with what we call deformational plagiocephaly. So if we look at a skull of a baby with deformational or positional plagiocephaly, again, the front of the skull looks fairly normal. But from the back of the head, we see this significant asymmetry with flattening of the skull on one side and bulging of the skull on the other side. Again, here's the soft spot, just like in the other skull. But you really see this shape difference here. And you can imagine that if this was the child's face with the ears here, as this side of the skull flattens, the ear actually rotates forward. And this problem, it doesn't affect the child's brain. It doesn't affect the child's development. But certainly, it affects the shape of the skull. And there are many ways of treating with this, including positioning the child, therapy, and cranial molding helmets. And we'll talk about more of those things in another video section. The thing that I want to point out, and why it's important to certainly have this problem evaluated by a qualified healthcare provider, is the difference between a flat skull in this child and a flat skull in this child. Now, both to the layperson may look fairly similar. There's flattening on both sides of the skull. But in this child, it's a very different condition. Here, we see this fused cranial suture. So if you remember before, we talked about the sutures. These act as essentially the growth plates or the joints of the skull. And in the child with positional plagiocephaly, you can see that these sutures are intact. We see the two squiggly lines that are here. But in this child, with what's called landoid synostosis, you see the ridge here. I'm not sure how well you can appreciate it on the video, 
but there certainly is a raised ridge here. And that's where that suture has fused together. So rather than being an expansile structure like this, it's prematurely fused together. And that's a very different type of problem with very different types of treatment than positional plagiocephaly. So because of this, we always encourage infants with any abnormal head shape to at least be seen by their pediatrician, and if necessary, by a pediatric plastic surgeon. If we can ever be assistance uh, to you or your child in providing an evaluation, we'd be more than happy to do that, and we welcome you to contact our office. Thank you.